Hello again, John from Copper Wi-Fi. Today we're going to take a look at setting up a management VLAN for our network. Uh, before we set up a just a flat network, all of these devices are on IP subnet 192.168.1.1 and we're going to move those devices on their own management portion uh, so that they're not seen by anybody else, they're not on the access layer and they just provide a little bit more setup, intentional setup I mean. Um, we can see that all the devices are adopted, they're at blue lights, that in indicates that they're ready to go, adopted to the cloud key. We have one IDF set up on the fiber there, and we have another one set up on that Ethernet. So let's take a look. All right, now that we're in our cloud key, what we're going to do is take a look at our device list. And if you note, we have all of our IPs at 192.168.1.1, and there's a DHCP server there. So when we come into our settings, and I'm just going to click this on real quick. This is uh, DPIs in beta, so I, I want to see what it looks like. So I'm just going to check this on and then we'll keep going and setting up our management. So click apply there and come over to our wireless networks. We only have one SSID set up, it's just with a PSK. So if we're gonna add any sort of trunking to it in the future, we need to create some networks. So set up our new network, let's call it management. It's a corporate network. We're gonna set it up on VLAN 30, so we'll set do 192.168.30.1 slash 24 and then VLAN uh, 30 there automatically sets up our DHCP range because the DHCP server box is checked there and we'll leave our DHCP lease time and DHCP guardian will turn that on that way 192.168.30.1 is the only allowed DHCP server in that subnet and we're gonna go ahead and set up some other networks here because I know that we're gonna use them in the future this next one we're gonna move our corporate access off of our default VLAN 1 and we're going to put it on VLAN 40. So let's set up 10.1.40.1 slash 24. And again, the slash 24 is CIDR notation. That's C-I-D-R. And Google it if you want to take a look and see how those are set up. Um, we'll set up our guarding on our corporate network for 10.1.41. And lastly, we might as well give our guests some access. So we'll create a guest access. And the purpose, we'll select guest. And we'll set them up on 172.16 dot 50 dot one slash and instead of a 24 here we're actually going to put a 23 because that gives us double the amount of IP addresses than a slash 24 and we'll set that up on VLAN 50 and we'll enable our DHCP guarding as well on this uh, network so 172 16 50 dot one we'll go ahead and click save okay so at that point all of our networks are created and we can start assigning these VLANs, or these access VLANs, however we would like to use them, to our networks. All right, so let's uh, close out of the settings here now that those have been applied to our uh, devices and head over to our switches. This is the MDF here. That's our 24 port. And we're going to look at the configuration here. And network is where you can assign a static IP address. Uh, services is where you can set a management VLAN. And you can see all of our uh, VLANs are here. If we select management, click apply, that's it. That's all you have to do to set it for a management VLAN. And this only kind of applies to the switches. And we'll kind of we'll go over that later with the um, with the access points and how to set up the management VLAN for those. So if we come through all of our three switches here, set up configuration, services, and then management, click apply. That's really it. One of the things that's also really good to do when you're looking at setting up uh, management VLANs is coming in and taking out the MAC address and naming your devices. So this is our 24 port MDF switch. So we're gonna name this 24 port. And it's also PoE, so let's toss PoE in there. We'll put it before MDF here. So click apply, that happens immediately. Um, and then we'll come up to one of our eight port switches. And the one that's connected via ethernet that is our IDF1, that's the close one. So we'll name that IDF1, click apply, and we'll come up to the one that's connected via the fiber, the one's simulating being farther away. This is IDF2, so we'll just name that IDF2. Click apply, that changes it instantly. That way we can pretty easily see which device we're looking at instead of having to rely on the picture here. And you can actually already tell that all three of our switches have already sw uh, adopted the 30 VLAN. And if we click on one of the access points, and let's kind of go through the configuration on these. You can see a bunch of the Wi-Fi. Uh, here's the alias where we can name that. So we could name this AP1. 
But if we look at the network, we don't really see anything about um, setting up the management VLAN. So let's go to the details. We can see that it's on IDF1. It's linked up at a gig, full duplex. And I guess we can name this one AP1. But if we're coming through and looking at the details here, we don't have the option of setting up the management VLAN. We can set up a static IP under network, no problem. So let's take a look at why that is. So let's remember that our access point is still set up on a switch. It's connected to IDF1 here. So if we close out of this and take a look at IDF1, um, we need to remember that we're inheriting the switch port properties as we're going down the network. So let's take a look at, let's select the port, and that little menu button next action is the configure button. So it's allowing all networks through. So default VLAN 1, is the default here. So let's go over to configuration and instead of just selecting management because I would push my SSID, let's create a tag under networks and VLANs with a uh, and let's call this AP tag because we're creating a trunk with only specific allowed access through but we're creating a native network allowed on that uh, switch port. So anything plugged in is by default going to get untagged management for its, uh, for its device but we're allowing corporate access and guest access past it, which means that our SSIDs can be configured on VLANs and allow the correct access per SSID. So we'll come over to the port, we'll name the port AP1, and it, this it, certain AP accepts PoE+, and then we'll come down to network and VLAN, we'll select our AP tag. Under advanced options, that's for the operation, link negotiation, and isolation. Uh, we can take a look at those at a later time. Click apply. And that's it for this one. Um, so we'll zoom out, go to AP2, that's uh, connected to IDF2, and select the port, and configure, call this one AP2. It's the exact same device, it selects PoE+, and select AP tag, apply. And that is it. We are now configured um, for our access points to get the management VLAN. However, one thing I noted when I was going through this is that we need to reboot the access points real quick. So let's take a look at how to do that. So if we come over to our IDF and go to port, there's a little recycle or refresh next action that essentially turns the PoE off to the port for about one to five seconds and turns off the access point, essentially causing a reboot. So let's do that to both of these devices. And as they're rebooting, I'm gonna speed up the video here just because it, you know, we don't want waste your time waiting on these things to reboot. Um, and as they reboot, they're gonna request a new IP address as they come back online. And you can see that AP1 already has 30.9. Let's hit refresh again, and AP2 now has 30.10. Let's go to the list of all of our devices here. And we can see that all of the MDF, the IDF, all the access points past the router are now on our management VLAN. And that's exactly what we were looking for. This is not the only way to, to set up a management VLAN on your network, just the one I chose to show. So if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. And if you want to subscribe to us, go ahead. That would be great. If you want to see later videos and like this video if you thought it was helpful. Thanks a lot. We'll catch you next time.